Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Uh, it's Mishmash Monday, which means we're going to cover a few subjects. But um, one of the subjects I want to cover, uh, last video we did was uh, on tape measures. And that was a lot of fun. A lot of great comments, a lot of good feedback. But, um, you know, a lot of people are asking about, well, what about the folding ruler? You left out this. I was talking about tape measures, but uh, if you want to talk about rulers, let's just uh, dive into a, a little bit about talking about rulers and chasing accuracy. Okay, now, just like the tape measure uh, video, this one's going to be just on rulers. I'm not going to cover squares or any of the other type of... Uh, a combination rules or anything. I'm just going to talk about rules on this one. Now, uh, probably most of us got our first introduction to the ruler in, in school. And when I was a kid, they were wooden. You know, now they're plastic. But um, remember, the old wooden rulers had that uh, metal insert in here, so it wouldn't wear down. Uh, typically, rulers, uh, both uh, school and uh, carpentry rulers, were made of boxwood because it's a very stable wood. Uh, very tight grain. It doesn't have a lot of expansion and contraction and we keep it very uh, accurate as accurate as wood can be. Uh, from the standard school rulers, we basically went to uh, longer rulers. Now, uh, not only in school, but at home, a lot of times would be introduced to what's known as the yardstick. And it was called the yardstick because a yard was 36 inches. And these all almost always were 36 inches. A lot of them were advertisement promotionals that were given away by companies to get you to come back. And, uh, you know, it would help with their business. Um, these were very good, you know, especially if you're wrapping presents, things like that. It was not only was it a fairly straight edge, but it was also a, a good way to measure 36 inches. A lot of uh, wrapping papers came that size. So it was a good ruler to have around the house things like that but what we're going to talk about today is mostly the rulers you would find in the shop now, years ago any self-respecting carpenter would have to have a good ruler uh because that's what a, a tool of his trade and uh these stanley uh, box rulers uh uh, box joint rulers were very common because uh, they would fold up uh, Usually they were about 24 inches, you know about two feet was standard and uh, If you notice they read from right to left which would today be considered a lefty ruler And then um, you also had these type folding rulers, which everybody was asking about. I remember we all used to play with these as kids I mean this was uh, this was a lot of fun. You know, I remember one being in my grandmother's drawer that I would always take out and uh, and fool around with. But uh, as far as using them, accuracy, again, was iffy, you know, and, uh, and we, we went on. Now, if you're going to spend any real time in the shop and you want to, you know, kind of look professional, the first thing you want to get is you want to get yourself a, a very durable ruler. And uh, one would be made of metal because you can really trust the straight edge on here to be straight. And uh, they come in all different sizes. These are center finding rules, a 24 inch and a 12 inch. And this works the same way that the, uh, the center ruler worked on, on the uh, tape measure where uh, you can place your item here and you can measure out inches from, from a center point. These are really great to have and, and come in very handy. But um, again, accuracy, we're going to talk about that in now, a minute. Now, you've heard me mention accuracy a couple times, and, uh, and I'll tell you why. Just like the level, you cannot trust a ruler unless you've, uh, you've checked it out and verified it. And uh, that's what we're going to show you how to do now. Now, here's my uh, ruler verifier. And all it is, it's a, it's about a 38-inch uh, piece of uh, scrap wood. And uh, what I did is I put a little block on one end here. And I'll show you what that's for. And I, I drew two lines, one at 20 inches and one at 36 inches. I know those are accurate. And um, I'll show you how you test a, a ruler using something like this. Now, for tape measures, the reason that I have this block on here is so that I can put it on here and test the hook like this and also the pushing part over here. So you can make sure that you, when you get the same reading, whether you're pulling off the end or whether you're pushing, butting against a, a surface. And, uh, and then you'll come up to a line. And you can see here, that's our 20 inch line right there. And when I do it on the pull surface, you could see I'm right on the money there. And when I do it on the push surface, you could see, same thing, I'm right on the money with 20 inches. Now, you'll see with most of your, your decent quality uh, tape measures, anything by a name brand, they all come in very accurate, more or less. And then you come up with something like this, okay? I'm not saying where it's made, but uh, something like this here, premium grade, what they say, premium grade, right? I'm going to show you here. I'm going to check it out. Now, look at the 20-inch mark here. 
Now do you see, we are not on, we are, it might only be a 32nd of an inch off, but when I'm going to do it with the push, the same thing with the push, and you can see here, uh, we're even even more off. But you can see it's it's off by maybe a 32nd of an inch, and that adds up, especially over the now length. This is a good way also of measuring yardsticks. Again, we'll butt it up against against the end there, and you can see the 20-inch mark. We're very close. Uh, here you can see 20 inch very close almost right on the money and the same thing measured up with the 36 But we'll do it here with this yardstick now you can see this yardstick here. It's just a hair just a hair under uh, The 20 inch mark, but uh, again when you're using a yardstick, you don't you know, you're not looking for that uh, a 64th of accuracy. Now here's a hundred year old uh, folding ruler and you can see here look how nicely that lines up. It's perfect at 20 inches and and that's why I uh, I love old tools that uh, work just as good as new Now ones. in order to make a check stick like the one I have there uh, the best thing to do is to have a couple good quality brand uh, rulers and measure out the 20 and when you, you get one that they all leave the same mark That's where you make the mark on the stick and then use that you got to verify it with three good quality rulers And that's another reason that when you are uh, doing a job try and use the same ruler from start to finish Especially if you're doing cabinet making or something like that where the measurements are critical Because um, if you switch between rulers, it might be off by a 32nd or so and that's one of the reasons one of the ways to uh, maintain accuracy let me show you something you know, else. Almost everything I spoke to you so far today was basically about woodworking, more or less. Yardsticks, folding rulers, they're all for woodworking because they break an inch down into eight sections like you have here and here or 16 uh, sections like you have here and up here. And down here, it even goes to 32. And that's about as, mu as close as you're going to get for woodworking is a 32nd of an inch. However... When we get to metalworking, that's a whole different story because uh, something like this, you know, where you break it down into small sections like this isn't uh, accurate enough for metalwork. It's a whole different accuracy. And let's talk okay, about Okay, real quick, easy way to remember how to deal with the inch over here. If you look over here, we have your one inch section of the ruler. Up here, it's broken into eights. That means eight sections. Uh, down here, it's broken into 16. Same inch, but now they, they doubled it. 16 sections in that one inch. If you flip it over now, uh, you could see on the top, we have it's broken down to 30 seconds. It's 32 times this inch is broken down. And over here, it's 60 fourths. So you would never use this for woodworking because the lead of your pencil would be too thick uh, even to carry over on that line. But you could see how accurate you can get. Now, if you think that's accurate, metalwork is break that same inch down to a thousand spaces. So you can just imagine how accurate you can be with that. Now, almost every machinist you're going to run into is going to have a a pocket a scale or what they call you know that's a six inch ruler that they keep in their pocket and a lot of times it'll be broken down here you can see on the bottom it's 30 seconds uh over here it's 64 it's usually stamped somewhere and um a lot of times on on it'll have different scales on one side or the other here over here it's eights and here is sixteenths you could see and uh, but what's real nice to look for if you ever come across one is called a hook ruler and that's a ruler that has a little hook over here because that and it's the same here and that makes it so much easier to measure something and I'll show now you what's so nice about the hook rule if you wanted to measure this nut and you want to say what's the thickness of this nut you just take this hook and you bring it right up against the one side here you see and then you look at the scale and you can see it's one inch one inch exactly and it's the same with any kind of hook rule that you get here you just bring it up to the side and you could see you got a beautiful uh, surface that you know is going to stay the same repeatable every single time. Whereas if you tried to measure it with a regular ruler here, now you have to be very careful. Here we'll put on this uh, side here. You got to be very careful that you get, you know, somehow that you get it to the edge. Now that could vary because your finger or whatever you're pushing it against could vary a 32nd or a 64th of an inch. So, you know, you're not that positive when you're bringing it up here. I mean, you could still get the measurement here, but it takes some feel because you got to be careful um, how hard you push on your thumb or whatever you have that, you know, to whether or not you'll get that accurate reading. Whereas when you have the hook scale, there's no doubt in your mind. You just bring it up there and you could read the scale right there. If you're going to look for one, try and get one with a hook on it. You'll really Now, one of it. our subscribers, John Michael, was asking how could he increase his accuracy when he's cutting. 
like if he had to cut a uh, a length of board, how can he make it more accurate? Because he was having a little difficulty with them matching up and things like that. And I'll uh, show you what I think some of the top problems are when trying to get more accurate when cutting a board. Now the first problem a lot of people have is making their, their initial cut line. Now you can see here I have two lines, one made with a dull pencil, and this one's made with a dull pencil, this one's made with a sharp pencil, and you could see the difference. This line is twice the thickness of that one, so right there leads to a little bit of inaccuracy. So get the sharpest pencil you can. Next off, if you want, when you want to mark where you're going to draw that line, uh, we put our tape measure on. Let's say we want to make a nine inch. Uh, let's say we want to make a nine inch cut on this board. We take our tape measure, put it here. Then you take your a scribe, like Randy's scribe here, and we put it right under the nine line, right like that. Make a little dimple. And uh, what I find is an easy way to do it is once you have that dimple, take the pencil, your tip of your pencil, place it in that dimple and hold it just like that. Then bring your square up to the pencil. And then now that line will be exactly, exactly on nine inches as you can see here so that's a really good way to do it to make sure that you get an accurate line and reading now let's talk a little bit about now kerf. when you get ready to cut your material depending on what kerf your blade has kerf is the thickness now if you look here this is a uh, scroll saw blade they're known to be extremely thin see how thin that is and uh you can cut very close to the line with this kind of blade uh, here's an old-fashioned, you know, circular saw blade. This one here had uh, oh, about just under a sixteenth of an inch of kerf, and uh, you know that you have to make uh, make sure that you realize you're not going to cut on the line with that. Now, when you use a carbide tip blade, you can see here that's the thickness of the uh, of the the cut that this blade is going to make, which is the same thickness as this piece of metal. Now, when you line this up on your wood to cut or whatever, you want to make sure that your blade cuts right there. You want to cut, it's called outside, the outside of the line. So if this was the good part of the wood that you wanted to keep here, and this is your scrap, this is considered the outside. A lot of times you'll see uh, carpenters will put a X on the outside of the, you know, so you know which side is which if they give it to somebody else to cut. But the main thing is that the blade should come right here, right, just, just, just touching that line on a little bit there and make that cut. And that'll give you an exact nine inch piece of wood. Now here we are over at the chop saw. If you notice, what we're going to do is bring the saw down and make sure that the side of the carbide teeth are just skimming the line. Then I'll make my cut and that'll give me a nice accurate cut on the side of the line. Now we wanted this board to be exactly nine inches, so what we'll do is we'll measure it out, look up here, and that is about as close to nine inches as you're gonna get. So uh, it works all the time, you just gotta take your time, and, uh, and accuracy will find you. So as you can see, accuracy is no accident, you just gotta work at it, a little bit of practice. Uh, I wish we could all be in a room one time because I would love to hear your thoughts on Elon Musk. You know, he came out with that new Cybertruck. He, uh, he had its demo uh, the other day. And I was just wondering what your thoughts are on that truck because uh, uh, I like Elon Musk. You know, I like that the fact that he's pushing the envelope. But uh, that truck, I, I, the one thing I thought was funny was that he says it's going to, uh, the base is going to start at 39990 or just under 40000 uh, how many of you think that number is realistic? Anyway, hope you have a nice day. Hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye.